Shalom, fam. Welcome to another episode of our show. We some of the brothers from the body of Christ Church. And as always, it's a blessing and a pleasure to come out and bring forth the words of the living God to his people. And as you can see, the topic today, we're going to be dealing with a very interesting, um, powerful topic. It's called, if, we, if we're the Jews, who's our leader? And it kind of piggybacks off the classes we've been doing about, you know, you know what is a Jew? and what we need to do individually if we are calling ourselves jews but this class is going to more focus on what we need to do as a unified group as a people if we be the chosen people of god because uh that's not a light thing you know to understand and to come to the understanding to say that yes you are a jew so if our people indeed be the people of the living god then we have to look at the history of our people and what took place and what is required of us as a people to return back to our God. And um, what I think is so powerful is that when we look at a topic like this, um, many times our people been in slavery and came out of slavery. Uh, we can learn from what they had to do. And what kind of motivated me to hit a topic like this is I was, uh, I was listening to one of my shows that I listened to and the show ended. And um, the Breakfast Club show came on and they were interviewing Roland Martin. And um, usually I would stop it. But since I was occupied, I, I let it play and I was listening to him. Um, he was bringing out this book that he's uh, um, that he's uh, advertising. And some of the things he said, because uh, um, he's, uh, he's one of those individuals that's out there. You know, when I was a little when I was in darkness and didn't really understand what was going on. I used to love to listen to him. You know, he, he's uh, he's somebody that all people look up to as a leader. And uh, <laughs> when you check out some of the things he say, uh, what was interesting about this particular interview is he brought out a scripture, and, <laughs> and I want I want us to look at the scripture that he said because he didn't read it really bring out the scripture in its proper context. And it was a scripture in Nehemiah, and um. We're going to play it. You know, we're going to play what he says. There's a couple points he said. There's about two clips of some things he said that I want us to really look at. And I want us to really focus on what we really need to do as a people to return back, um, to to build ourselves back up stronger and better than before. So, uh, you know, with that, I'm going to let you come in, brother, and uh, give your, your two piece. Oh, I got a 16 piece. But first, I'm going to give... <laughs> All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ for the time, the opportunity, and the Lord willing technical difficulty-free experience that we are about to have, um, trying to edify our people. And in the words of the still vastly unpopular Malcolm X, I'm going to paraphrase this, 
But if it's somebody of our people that they're always sticking a mic in their face and they're up, uplifting mm -hmm. him in the media, that is not a person that you should listen to because their mm -hmm. interests are not our interests. Their interests are their own interests. And I also mix a little uh, Booker T. Washington in there as well. So um, that's it. I just want to give all praises to the Most High through Christ. And uh, let's get rolling, brother. Yeah, you're giving all praises. Um, being that you said that, I'm going to read a quick scripture to, uh, to set the stage. Um, let's, let's take a quick look at uh, what is it? Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 50, I think, would be a good starting starting. Okay. Point. Let's read verse. Uh, excuse me. Uh -huh. Let's read okay. verse uh, 6 and 7. Um, increase the font size, bro. Kind of like to, uh, to have us in the pick, but for you. Okay, no, you can. No, it's a thing on the website. You can increase the font size. It's at the top. Um, okay, I, I, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, just scroll up a minute. Let me. Uh, yeah, right there. Font size, text size, underneath the verse where it says Bible options. You text showed size. it to me before, but uh, yeah, it. it's Bible options underneath underneath fifty. Bible options, text yeah, size, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then hit plus twice. There you go. Now we can Good. still be in the picture. And then you wanted Jeremiah 50 verses 6 and 7? Yes, sir. All right. All praises. Oh, okay. Jeremiah chapter 50 verses 6 and 7. My people hath been lost sheep their shepherds have caused them to go astray they have turned them away on the mountains they have gone from mountain to hill they have forgotten their resting place stop there for a minute because mm -hmm. that's uh when you look at it like the scriptures say man uh, things that have been done is that which shall be done it's like a continuous cycle and when you look at our people yes we are lost sheep and the people that we look up to as leaders, what mm -hmm. are they doing? They have from even Jer even Isaiah talked about it in Isaiah 30 when it when um the people was turning to Egypt again for help. And and Egypt, which was the kingdom that originally enslaved our people, that's who mm -hmm. they were turning to, and when things got difficult for help. And even even all throughout the history, they would turn to the Babylonians, they would turn to different empires. And as it stands this day, instead of turning to who we need to turn to, we're turning to different people, different governments, and looking to them to be our help. But the scriptures tell us here that they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Mm -hmm. It also tells us in Isaiah, I believe Isaiah 29, where it says, this is the rest wherein you may cause the weary to rest. And this mm -hmm. is the refreshing, but yet, they were not here and that's where we at that's yeah. where we at as a people as it stands to this day um go ahead read on jeremiah 50 verse 7 all that found them have devoured them and their adversaries said we offend not because they have sinned against the lord the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Mm, mm, mm. So the Lord, it says the Lord, something very powerful says about the Lord. It says the habitation of justice, mm -hmm. even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. So that's who, though, when you talk about you being a Jew, that's who was always our hope. That's who always will be our hope. And, and the scripture is going to bring it out crystal clear what we have to do in these last days. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the other nations, they know, they know their elites, the people that's running this world, the, the world is in darkness. But the people that's running and calling the shots, they know who the people are. Yeah. And they have no pity. They have yeah. no pity. They never had pity. That's why it says the adversary said, we offend not. Because yeah. they have sinned against the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so they know. And they, they got their feet on our neck. And that's where it's going to be until we find out where our resting place is and who we need to turn to for our help. Exactly. And you know, brother, the scripture talks about, it's, one, it's in one of the so-called minor prophets where it talks about 
the enemy has furthered the affliction. Yeah. So the Lord had set us for punishment, but our enemies took it farther than they should have. And they're going to get punished for that. Mm -hmm. But still in all, there are Muppets and puppets with these enemies hands up there behind like a Muppet from Sesame Street. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're mouthing smooth and peaceful words to us that are actually lies and deceits, Absolutely. things that keep us sleep. And these things should not be so if these people really loved us. No, they love their employers. Mm -hmm. They love their puppeteers, their puppet masters. And we need to be careful about who we even give authority of thought to. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. No but that point. That point is going to be made even more magnified as the show go on because mm -hmm. uh, we're going to really examine these uh, adversaries whom we are looking to for help. And we're going to really examine who we really supposed to be mm -hmm. looking at if it be the Lord's will. So um, I'm going to play a clip of, like I said, it's, it's the Breakfast Club and it's Roland Martin doing what he does. <laughs> he direct our people into um, politics, which is which whom our people believe that's the remedy. So we want to look at that. So, uh, all right. I'm going to have to go on mute when I see this guy. So let me go. Yeah, I know a lot of our people um, have a lot of respect for him. And I understand why. Like I said, I used to be there also until, you know, I started understanding. Brother started educating me and I started to understand what was really taking place behind the scenes. So I know a lot of our people, like I said, have a lot of respect for him as being a leader. So I'm going to play the clip and then we're going to explain why this is, this is not the answer or the remedy. Okay. All right, so uh, let me see where we at. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got a new book out? White uh, fear. Uh, indeed, indeed. How the Browning of America is making white folks lose their minds. What exactly is white fear, Mister? And look at that. Look at that cover. Look that's at that it. photo. That's, uh, that's from January sixth. You got this white guy's arms outstretched. He's basically saying, "All this is out," mm -hmm. and that that really. I just want to stop for a second to focus on this background because you see the uh the lgbt um flag this is somebody else they they are uh, gravitating to which is part of their power structure which he gonna he's gonna bring that out um over here boycott black murder um which is understandable him saying that but we're not supposed to murder anybody you know we boycott murder period you know what i'm saying and you know the word of most high is for the whole world we his people we're going to be bringing the word to his whole to the whole world and you know there's this thing like like the word is just for israel yeah the word is for israel first but the whole world need to hear this and the whole world needs to repent and that's the the state the world's going to be at the re when the christ return the whole world's going to be following and for me to say that I don't want a, uh, uh, someone to keep the commandment because he's an Edomite is foolish. Even John the Baptist told um, told the Edomite in his time that was sleeping with his brother's wife that he was committing a sin. Because the whole world is supposed to be following the commandments of the Most High. And we, as Israelites, as Jews, are supposed to be instructing the whole world into following the commandments of the Most High. So do we want anybody to break the commandments? The answer is no. Do we want a would we teach anybody that's okay? Will we tell an Edomite it's okay because you're an Edomite, it's okay for you to break the commandments? The answer is no, because that's wicked. We want the whole world, if it be our choice, to keep the commandments of the most high, including Edom or any other nation. Or for the people that, that don't know uh who I mean by Edom, the uh, European, Caucasian, Greco Roman, whatever you want to call it. We're not going to tell nobody, oh, it's okay for you to steal. It's okay for you to murder. It's okay for you to bear hatred. No, we tell the whole world to fear the most high. And that's wisdom. 
right? And one, one thing right quick. White people wouldn't have any fear if black people wasn't doing all of this bunch of murder. There would be no white people fear of us because the scriptures say when we keep the commandments of the Most High through Christ, all of the other nations would look at us as a great and wise and understanding people. Mm. So, yeah, we do need to boycott murder and there would be no white fear of us or trying to keep us down, the man trying to keep us down and all this stuff. Do they would look at they would uplift us and call us a great and understanding and wise people. But since we do foolishness against the most high, they are afraid of us, rightly so, because we are foolish in their eyes and every other type of people's eyes. And they don't want to be a part of foolishness. Well, I would say there is a fear of us getting back in power because they knew what we did and what we're capable of when we're, we're in power and serving the most high. And there is a fear of us raising back up and becoming the people of the most high, because if we do, yeah. that's, that's the end of the hip power. Yeah. But most, the most white party, people, yeah, but most white people out here ain't in power anyway. It's only the rich liberal elites that's in power and they're actually not white. And I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Good point does explain the reality uh, of white America and the history of this country. This country was uh, formed and created for them. Uh, and so what they're freaking out about is where we're now moving. 2043, nation becoming a majority of people of color. Uh, and it shows how their reaction. January 6th, remember, Donald Trump targeted four cities. He kept talking about Atlanta, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Detroit. Uh, and so the anger was that black turnout. Uh, the attacks on uh, black turnouts, gutting of Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act, uh, gutting of Section 2, uh, this whole desire, this, this anger uh, at what is going on, because it's all it comes down to money and power. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it boils down to. And so they don't want to give any of that up. And if you look at the history of America, every period mm -hmm. of black success has always been followed by white backlash. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, mm -hmm. you, 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 I mean, take the thing back to stop, the Civil stop, War, stop, Reconstruction, stop. Jim. Stop. Every period of black success has been followed by a period of white backlash. Oh, you mean like when black people being the most successful people from 1900 to 1950, more successful than any other ethnicity? Mm. as a total population and the result of that success was the liberal elites funding and putting the so-called big six martin luther king and the others in front of a movement to integrate us so that our businesses and 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 communities would be devastated by integration is that what you're talking about mm. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that what you're talking about? The pimp move that they put on us in the 60s that people like this dude still lie about? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're going to have to rewind it a little bit because um, he, he started out with another point. So like, go back like 30 seconds or something. Hold on. Uh, formed and created for them. Uh, and so what they're freaking out about is where we're now moving. 2043, nation becoming a majority of people of color. Uh, and it shows how their reaction. Mm -hmm. January 6th, remember, Donald Trump targeted four cities. He kept talking about Atlanta, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Detroit. Uh, and so the anger was that black turnout, uh, the attacks on uh, black turnout, was gutting of Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act, the gutting of Section 2. Uh, this whole desire, this this anger uh, at what is going on, because it's all it comes down to money and power, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it boils down to. And so they don't want to give any of that up. And if you look at the history of America, every period of black success has always been followed by white backlash mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. you, 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 I mean, take the thing back to Civil War, Reconstruction, mm -hmm. Jim Crow. Every period, and the anxiety is always: Are we going to lose our jobs? Uh, are they going to take our women? Oh, you're gonna lose our money. I mean, that's that. This is the constant deal, even during during the civil rights movement. Remember, you had the civil rights act of '64, 
Voter Rights Act of 65, but they filibustered Republicans and Democrats, the Fair Housing Act. They were like, all right, we, we, we let y'all vote. Hold on a second. Y'all can't live with us. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. <laughs> I, I know you wanted to come in on that. Uh, Hold on a second. This <laughs> dude, dude, stop trying to rewrite history. The Democrats filibustered this stuff the longest filibuster, I think, until two or three years ago was Democrats filibustering the passage of these acts. Mm. And the only way the Republicans, uh, who was the anti-slavery, anti-Jim Crow party, until Democrats told black people that they wasn't, the only way they uh, uh, were in on this was they cooperated and changed the act a little bit and softened it so that the Democrats would acquiesce, mm-hmm. you know, and only one Democrat switched to the Republican party. Yeah. So this man is, this dude is kicking, he's up here speaking of a rewritten history. I mean, it's documented that this stuff didn't happen the way that he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And they try to, one of the things they always throw in there is that uh, they, the party switched side during the time of reconstruction. Which we know is a bunch of BS no. because even um not that long ago, who's a, one of the biggest KKK members, uh Bill Bird, I believe his name was, had passed a Democrat. So if they switch sides, why was he still a and, Democrat at the time he he died when um you had Bill Clinton and all them um glorifying him? Yeah, they went to they went to his funeral, and the the current president gave his eulogy at his funeral. It was Robert Byrd who mentored Hillary Clinton, Mm -hmm. whether she got hot sauce in her purse at an event or not. (laughs) Okay, and I pulled up an article about a document where they documented setting the record straight on the party switch, so-called, that happened in the 60s. It was one congressman, one, that switched Mm -hmm. sides, one. Mm-mm. The rest stayed with their party affiliation, and the current leaders of this part uh, of of both parties are basically, uh, um, ideologically speaking, the sons and daughters of the people that were running in Congress at that time. Yeah, and um, one thing we was talking about that a lot of our people don't seem to realize that when you go back to the 18, even back in the 1800s, there was a lot of blacks that were in the Senate and in the um, in Congress. And when that, Lord willing, we have time, we're gonna pull it up. Okay, I'm just gonna play a little more. Uh, we're about done with this. So. Please, please get this dude off the screen, man. That has been a constant thing, and we're still seeing it. And this is not a white conservative thing. There's some white Democrats and progressives who also don't want us to be to be a part of this economic, uh, having that economic power and having and having that uh, that influence. But because we now change the voting, we now get our say so. And they're struggling with that. And, and Donald Trump was at the beginning of that. This is going to be a continuation, I guarantee you, over the next 50 plus years. Okay. Yo, yo, when Barack Obama was elected twice and the first time a boatload ton of white people voted for him yeah he, he never said anything about systemic racism he never addressed it and it's funny that we voted for him and none of us really got what we wanted either Absolutely. So you lumping in all of this stuff about politics, we can hold people accountable and we can vote and get what we want. Absolutely not. The history, even with a black president, and you can put the blame on whatever, but presidents make executive orders. You can put the blame wherever you want to. Politics ain't working for us. Yeah, and um, that's the thing. They always try to... um um, use the color thing, like you know, if you vote for a black person, that's that's the key or the remedy, regardless of what the person believes. But when we look at the scriptures, um, a lot of these politicians that they say run behind and vote for, they pass in statutes and laws that's uh, totally against the Most High in the scriptures. 
Yeah. Like and now we, we have a lot of these politicians that's running for office. Barack Obama himself also um a pro homosexuality, pro abortion, um, pro abortion. And, and this thing that's going on now with the changing of sex and the transsexual and um passing laws to uh make children be be able to take these pills that stop them from uh reproducing and and uh, begin to alter their sex, which I call all sorcery. Because you're changing, um, yeah, um, the, uh, 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 a male child. You don't. You're giving them things to to stop him from producing um, mm -hmm. testosterone. Yeah, and um, increasing the estrogen level in his body. You know, these are all evil things that these politicians are pushing, and yet our people are saying, "Let us get behind them." And at the same time, you're totally going against the Most High and things that He has. Uh, instructed for us to be and to do yeah you know, in a lot of these organizations also go ahead brother. hey um one thing right quick if he says white people are scared of us uh are scared of this country being a majority colored or black or brown whatever population by 2043 and you know he's you know saying that this is what they're freaking out about and all this other stuff right because we're too successful <laughs> but so why are these people, and like he said, even some Democrats and liberals, why are these people promoting abortion to lessen our numbers? But that's a whole nother class. Mm -hmm. But this dude is probably pro-choice. You know, the thing is, too, um, a lot of the stuff that they're saying, you know, if you really research what's being said, it's a um, it's a media narrative that's really being controlled by the elites again. You know what I'm saying? It's and it's really a made up false narrative, but a lot of people believe in it because you have the news and the, you got the media pushing it, and it's really a, a, a tactic of division because they really uh what they're really doing is bringing down the, the society because. Even when we look at the um, the immigration thing, it's not just something that's happened here in the United States. A lot of people say, well, it's the Democrat Party, they doing this, they trying to um, get people here from uh, Mexico and these other uh, uh, South American countries, and they're really coming from all over into the country to get votes. But you're just looking at what's going on here in the United States because the same thing is going on in Europe. It's a, bring, it's a bringing down of western civilization and, and bringing in a global government because what's going on in europe they bringing in people from the arab world and they're bringing out their borders also yeah you know i don't want to um yeah that's that's another class that's two more yeah, yeah, classes yeah, yeah. that we just talking about so we look forward uh in the future lord willing for classes on those topics um um, the, so what was this scripture that this dude mentioned? Was it in that video? Or no, no, no. It's another clip I'm, I'm going to play. Okay. All right. But I was giving you time to address some of those things that yeah. you know about the Voting Rights Act and of the 1965. Because a lot of our people, like we said, didn't know that prior to those times, when you go before, during the time of the Reconstruction and things of that nature, there were, uh, there were already a lot of Blacks in politics. And, 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 um, I myself, I thought like when they were talking about the Voting Rights Act that was when I was younger, I thought that's when blacks was first being allowed to vote. But that was not the case, you know, because we yeah. were we've been allowed to vote. It's just that they were passing laws and manipulating the vote and, and making it harder for us to vote, uh, namely the Democrat Party. Oh, no, that, don't you talk about more Democrats. <laughs> yeah. So I know you have some things you wanted to bring out on that. So, uh. <laughs> bro, it's too it's too too long to list. Where's you know what? Can I can I start with the uh, uh, Roland Martin's Wikipedia page? Maybe that might be a good start. Okay. Well, let me let me uh share this screen, bro. Um, here we go. Can you can you see it? Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, 
Roland Martin, Wikipedia. All right. Well, you were serious. Yeah, I'm I'm absolutely serious. <laughs> okay. Roland Martin, Wikipedia, born in 68, American journalist, commentator of TV One, host of News One Now, Washington, on uh, Watch with Roland S. Martin. Also CNN, CNN appearing on a variety of shows. If you're not down with CNN's agenda. Mm -hmm. And who controls that agenda? <laughs> rich 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 liberal elites mm -hmm. if you're not down with their agenda you're not going to be on their on their network exactly so who is he speaking to or excuse me who is he speaking for it's a black face speaking their agenda exactly 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 and a lot of people a lot of our people are following that agenda. Agenda. In, in payment for him being down with their their agenda, you write a book and you get paid for the book. You get an advance from the uh, the publishing company as a thanks for you pushing their agenda. That's a that's a rabbit hole. by the way tv one's weekday morning show um they ended up canceling the show due to low ratings from black viewers because people must have known that he was so much speaking the agenda that our people was dissatisfied but you have to understand tv one is a network right what black person got enough money to build, create, and finance a network? Okay. And then for his work also, you know, even though the show was canceled, <laughs> he got some he got some awards because they have these awards. NAACP ain't Ain't, ain't wasn't created like he was talking about this country ain't wasn't created for us the system is is to benefit them the NAAC, NAACP wasn't created by us yeah yeah and it wasn't meant to benefit us exactly exactly a lot of these groups that they that's supposed to be we look to as leaders are being funded created and funded by other people that don't look like us yeah yep and then we see how um he got uh he got into some controversy and i don't want to i don't want to focus too much on him I kinda yeah wanna yeah focus on him. no i just this, yeah just give me about 20 seconds he said something they was about to cancel him but he came back so you got to be down with their agenda absolutely and and that's all i'm saying that that's all i'm saying you got to be down with their agenda for them to keep sticking a microphone in front of your face for you to talk you have to be down with their agenda now if he was on youtube talking about the real stuff and his channels kept getting suspended or canceled and he'd have to recreate another one and stuff like that i would even trust him more because people been talking about stuff like this about how they make puppets and create them and uplift them and you put words in their mouth that was it yeah yeah so the thing is you know our people um from the time of us coming out of uh slavery in this country till this day instead of looking towards you know the most high you know, we have always been looking to be just like those that enslaved us. And that's the direction he's really gearing us is the same people that have been not only enslaved us, but have been um, systematically 
strategically behind the scenes um trying to destroy us destroy us um for example putting drugs in our community you know um you know what all different avenues that you can look at has been working against us those are the people that you know they're trying to direct us towards to uplift us and liberate us which is not going to happen you know and especially at this time that we're in because if you look at the time that we're in matter of fact i'm gonna pull out a quick scripture we read this all the time but it's something that we really need to keep in mind um this is revelations 18 and like i said this is something that we read all the time but it goes along with this topic I just want to read Revelation 18, um, read verse 1 and 2 for me. And I have to uh, do what you did with the other one. Um, is that good right there? I don't hear you. You probably muted, brother. Uh, yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, that's excellent. All praises. Revelation 18, verses 1 and 2. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So when we look at this country that we're in, whether we're looking at here or whether we're looking at um, Western civilizations, you know, the... Um, these great empires that came out of the Greco-Roman world. And we look at what's going on with them financially, um, morally. We see a, a quick decline in the societies that we're in. We see um, the financial system is, is you know, a lot of our people don't see what's going on because they, they're being rocked to sleep by the fake news media, which are getting their marching orders from the, um, the secret uh, government agencies like the CIA, the FBI and these things. And they don't really see what's going on, and the 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 um, the, 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 the destruction and the downfall of the society is taking place very rapidly. And the only place to really turn, if you're turning to politics, you see all these uh, different areas, especially these uh, democratic cities and things of that nature. They're in total disarray and decay. You know, it's like things are getting worse and worse and worse as our political leaders are constantly telling us politics is the answer. And we constantly keep voting for these different politicians. And it's I mean, it should start to when is it going to start to resonate that. This the democracy that you're looking at, this uh, uh, what's supposed to be a, um, a constitutional republic. It's no longer that. It has been taken over by powerful people that has a that have a different plan than what the found the so-called founding forefathers had planned. And our people are still living that dream. The school systems are being destroyed. The medical systems are are, are, are collapsed. You know what I'm saying? They they're poisoning their population, and a lot of people don't even see that yet. The population has been poisoned. It's a, it's route is it's it's um what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, it's totally deteriorated and corrupt. It is corrupt from the inside out, and you still have your trust on this system. The most I say is destroyed. It's falling. It's falling before your face but a lot of people do not see it they are confound i know you have something you want to bring out there yeah well i'm just gonna say this some people are gonna keep believing the government and these politicians so much until their pro excuse me until their pronouns are was and were mm. And that's, that's another thing. That's a good point you're bringing out because you look at the educational system and what they're pushing on our sons and daughters, man. They, they bring out confusion about things that are very simple about a man and a woman. You know, that's being um, polluted. 
what a man is, what a woman is. That is like a telltale sign of a, of a society that's totally deteriorating in front of your eyes. When you don't, when, when that basic level of wisdom about what a man is, what a woman is, what marriage is, is being taken away. Now they're to the point, um, they're now they're to the point they're trying to justify pedophilia. Even the justice system is a joke. You got people that's like this new, this guy now um, that's got caught up in this scheme with the bitcoins and stuff like that. Uh, I forgot his name. Um, puppet. Yeah, he's he's a he's another puppet, but he's he's not even gonna face no time for that. No, he's not gonna face no time. Is based <laughs> you getting justice is based on you whether you following the elites and the and the system they set up or you against it. Yeah, that's what it's coming down to, and it's all in everybody's face. But a lot of our people, like I said, are being rocked to sleep by that fake news media, and yeah. they don't see what's taking place, and their their trust is still in the society, and the society, as the scripture said, is falling. It's 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 being it's it's, mm -hmm. it's deteriorating. Yeah. Um. Read verse four for me. Okay. Verse four, Revelation eighteen, verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Yeah, because when you look at the philosophies of the society, what they're teaching the people in their institution, in academia, it's very sinful, man. It's very evil and perverted. And what they have accepted as a society is very evil and perverted, man. It's a place of foul spirits and demonic, demonic spirits, man. That's in the people, and that's just spreading, man. It's just, it's just getting worse as the time elapsed. Well, um, you know, um, I hate to be on record saying this, but can we hear that? Roland Martin, uh, it hurt to just even say that. Can we hear that part where he was mentioning a scripture? Okay, okay. So I we can get it, get finished with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to uh, bring that out, and I there's some scriptures I, I want to go into that scripture and um, <laughs> and really show what that scripture is really dealing with because it is a good scripture and it does point out what our focus need to be. You know, mm -hmm. that is all in that scripture. Yes. Yep. What our focus needs to be. Should we be joining hands with our oppressors and other people to uplift us up as being the Lord's people? Yep. So let me, uh, okay, let me bring it out. I, I was, was really I'm, planning I'm a, on you um, sharing uh, some of that thing, some of the things you yeah. had before we went into that. Yeah, I, I'm going to diligently try to hold my peace during this this um, episode. Uh, please forgive me for going uh, uh, too long before. Okay. All right. We only got him. Um, I'm, this clip is only going to be about a minute long when he brings this out. But again, he's pushing us into politics. <laughs> and so, again, if we want to see change in our cities, in our states, uh, in this country, it is going to require people to be accountable and do something. My mom and daddy were part of a civic club in Clinton Park in Houston, Texas. So people have to understand, I think this way because I saw two people who never went to college get with a few neighbors and they say, we want to do this and this and this. We want some new streets, some new sidewalks, some new lights and take these crack houses down and take these abandoned lots down. They or not. People are like, man, this is, it ain't going to work. Y'all going to fail. That's also biblical. biblical. Go read Nehemiah chapter 2, 3, and 4. He saw the reap the wall of Jerusalem that crumbled. He said, we need to rebuild the wall. But go read the scripture. It says, the people said, let us rebuild. Mm. Our problem is we have black generals. We ain't got enough black troops. Mm. We've got people like Tamika and Until Freedom and Linda. We've got folks over here with different Black Lives Matter chapters. You've got other people out there who are doing the work. They need folk to stand with them and show up as opposed to, well, they got it. No, this is how you rebuild. This is how you actually fight. But that's the accountability part. 
A lot of folk may just want to sit back and want somebody else to do all the damn work. That's what they want. And I'm saying it can't happen. When I'm out here fighting for black on media, I. All right. So, so he brings out these groups. Uh, we got Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What did they do with that 90 something million dollars? Yeah, and when we look at another, that's another perfect example of a group that's funded by who? Funded by our enemies, people that have no good intentions for us, and that's who they put their trust in. They really think, if you see the media pushing a group, <laughs> that right there, you, you need to really look at it, man, because one, that group wasn't created by us. It was created by our enemies. The people that funded that group weren't us. And the group was against marriage. It was against the man, the, um, nuclear family, the nuclear husband, family. wife, children in the same house. Thank you. It's against that. And that's who set up the nuclear family? Who scared up a, the, um, a house of a husband and a wife and children? The most high. The most high. Christ. So when you set up a group that's contrary to that and you're telling our people to join hands with that group, what are you doing? You're promoting Satan. Thank you. Thank you. So so that's not the people that we're supposed to be following. That's not who we're supposed to be following. And that's we need to really understand that. Um, if you guys don't have anything, I want to go to that scripture in Nehemiah. Yes, please go, uh, because um, I don't have anything other than to use the scriptures to disprove what this guy is saying so that hopefully people will be edified to know to not listen to him at all mm -hmm. moving forward. And he, he is a, I'll, I'll give it to him, he's a good talker. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's good at talking. That's what our people like. It's very entertaining, you know, to hear, hear somebody um because he said three scriptures. He said, really, he said three chapters. But you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to read. Before I read what he says, I'm going to start at Nehemiah, the first chapter, so we get some context okay. of what's taking place. Okay. And then we're going to deal with it um, according to the words of the Most High God. Uh, so let me uh, share my screen real quick. I thought I had to share it already, brother. So there okay. No, that's all right. Good. Nehemiah chapter one, right? Chapter one. Okay. We're going to read verse one down to nine and see what this brother All right. is dealing with. Okay. Nehemiah chapter one, starting at verse one, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. And it came to pass in the month Chislu in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace that Hanani, one of my brethren came, he and certain men of Judah. And I asked, excuse me, asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. So a little quick breakdown of what took place, because in, in the series that we did scattered, we did go into Nebuchadnezzar taking Jerusalem and bringing the people out in captivity. Mm -hmm. um, when a lot of people fled to uh, a lot of our people fled to a lot of different places. And, and we also brought out how they fled to um, Carthage is one of the places that a lot of people took ships and left. Um, so during this time, the Persian and the Mean em Empire is in rulership. That's why he talks about was in Su mm -hmm. Shushan, the palace, which is a palace of the medial Persian Empire. And he was uh, he worked for the king of the Persian Empire at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he was a cup barrier, right? Yes, he was the cup bearer for the king. And he had vast influence on policy matters. Exactly, exactly. So um, let's read on. Nehemiah 1 verse 3. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. So Jerusalem in that time when the Babylonians came in was destroyed. And one of the people that came in there and helped to destroy it, it talks about it in the book of Obadiah, was the children of Edom. You know, yep. they burnt down the temple, you know. So mm -hmm. this this was the state that we were in, and we were in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. So when you're looking at a people coming out of captivity and allowed to return back home or 
so to speak, the chains being taken off of them, mm -hmm. as we went through, we got to look at their mindset on how they dealt with that situation as a people. So let us look at that. Um, so when, I also want to look, look at this. Uh, he said, um, the providence are in great affliction. Matter of fact, says, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. I just want to read that word reproach real quick. The word reproach okay. is uh, to find fault with a person, group, blame, censored, to upbraid, blame or censored, conveyed in disapproval. So that's like our people now. We're looked at in reproach. We're looked at as the blame of a lot of problems in the society. And we're partially responsible for that because of how we deal as a people. So um say that one more time slowly. I said we're partly responsible on how we're looked at as the blame of a lot of problems of the society because of the way we deal as a people. And you know, we're a burden instead of being self-reliant on ourselves to uplift ourselves and discipline our children and discipline our people to doing things that are right mainly in the eyes of the most high to live a righteous life no we make a lot of excuses and we look for a handout from those that are oppressing us and when you do that people are always going to look at you as a reproach and as a blame for problems in the society thank you <clears throat> okay so uh thank you very much giving all praises so let's pick back up verse four Nehemiah 1 verse 4, and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So wait a minute. He went to the Most High when he looked at the situation of his people and prayed to him. And that's who we all should be looking to and praying about concerning our situation, not to politicians. So go ahead, read on Say that again slowly. <laughs> yeah. So when you look at the scriptures, it's going to come out a lot more is that the person they looked to when they saw our people in a bad situation or in a bad state was not crying to politicians or to other people, but they went and cried before God for to help to for their help and for their upliftment. They went to the most high. And that's who Nehemiah is, is showing us right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nehemiah 1 verse 5, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. And he's saying something very important here that we have to acknowledge because it's not just here, it's all through the scriptures. It's even in Leviticus when it prophesies that we would be in a far country that we have and we are being let loose. We have to turn back to him, confess the things that we have did that caused us to fall in the position that we're in acknowledge our sins and turn back to him because that's what he said right here he said um verse five says and i said i beseech thee o lord god of heaven the great and terrible god that keepeth the covenant that keepeth covenant and mm -hmm. mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments so he can't even come to the most high unless he's doing it you have to love the most high and how do you love the most high by right obeying him thank you by obeying him and that's what we need to do as a people we need to obey him and observe his commandments for him to even consider listening to us we have to obey him we have to repent 
and return back to him. And that's what, why a lot of our people don't want to do that. They want to they want to look to the politicians. So you're going to continue to be confound. You're going to be continue to be robbed and spoiled because yeah. that's what the politicians are going to do. When you, you read know, the scriptures, we're going to read it too, that the people that we turned to to lead us were men that feared God. We didn't turn to a damn politicians that that Why? don't care nothing about the most high that go in office and end up being way richer than what he went in. And even when you look at the system, the system is set up where you need a lot of money to run and stay in office. So how do you get this money? You, don't. Have, you have to make agreements and tap dance to these uh, special Donors. interests. Yes, special interests, yep. Special interest groups which don't give a damn about you as a people, don't care about the society or the people that's voting you in. They care about their agenda. And that's why we said they're controlled by the super rich because they're the ones that's controlling the ball. Yeah. And their plans ain't to rebuild your cities. That's Their plans ain't to rebuild your cities. Unless they move you out to the suburbs first. Mm -hmm. their, their plans ain't to do nothing for you. Their plans is when you look at what the elites have planned, when they set up their little forms that they had the little day boats meetings they having and things of that nature, it's nothing good for you. They don't have nothing good for you planned. So get that out of your head. So, um, you, you know, one thing to be right with the most high, we have to change according to how he says we should live. Mm -hmm. and then have hope in him saving us. We won't listen to that. But if a politician comes out with hope and change, we'll be all into that, even though things get worse. Yeah, yeah. You, we see, how, you see how we are? Mm -hmm. We just had, uh, not too long ago, we had a so-called black president. What did, he, how did, what did he do? Hope and change. What did he do, though? What change do we see? They got worse. Yeah, all these cities that we have, you know, because one of the things they like to push, oh, is a black person. You got to go out and vote. He's black. All these black politicians that is that is that are in office, what good have you seen yet? Have things getting better or are they getting worse? Man, don't listen. Don't be talking about my political affiliation like that, bro. Man, you don't know what you know. Mm -hmm. You got to You don't fact, know politics, bro. You just gotta. You just gotta hope and and trust and. And vote and hold people accountable, and that'll make it work. Mm -hmm. So, verse six says, "Let thy ears now be attentive, and thy ears open, that thou thine mayst eyes. hear." Thy eyes, thank you. Thy yeah. eyes open, that thou mayst hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants. So, the children of Israel are the Jews are supposed to be servants of the most high and confess the sins of their children and confess the sins of of the children of israel which we have sinned against thee both i and my father's have house have sinned and that's what we, we really need to understand when we yelling about where the jews where the jews where we are the jews but yes we have done a lot of evil against god and that's why we were brought down low to where we were at we got to recognize that mm -hmm. and we have to repent from that. We're going to bring it out. We're going to show you. But go ahead, read on. And, you know, it's funny how we are the Jews and wouldn't acknowledge the most high in Christ. And we were sinning. So he destroyed us and put over us people that claim to be us and sin just as much as we were sinning. But he let them stay over us as punishment to see how foolish we were. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nehemiah 1 verse 7, we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commanded thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Mm. So... <laughs> That's something we have to look at, you know what I'm saying? Because that that these are the things that showing us who we are. We have been scattered abroad. We're not in our homeland. We're in a far mm -hmm. country. 
-hmm. you know so the question remain what do we do verse 9 nehemiah 1 verse 9 but if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part excuse me though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of heaven yet will i gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that i have chosen to set my name there that's deuteronomy 30. that's deuteronomy 30 absolutely and and it's crystal clear what we need to do you know what i'm yep. saying he's telling us the most High is telling us as a people what the focus is the only thing is now his son Christ came and died. So we will get that mercy and get that second chance to return. And he came and gave us a good, perfect understanding on what we need to really focus on. And through him and through his blood, we are going to get that chance again to be the people of the most high through our Lord and Savior Christ, his son. And that's going to you know, be the Lord's will. You know, we're going to bring it out in the scriptures and show you that in the scriptures um if we have time if not laws well we'll continue next week mm -hmm. um so from there let's go to uh, now uh, now we got some a level of understanding of what's going on let's go to the second chapter mm -hmm. i want to read that part where it said that uh the people got together and they build okay um, there's an important point there but let us start at verse 17 okay nehemiah down. chapter 2 verse 17 then i said unto them ye see the distress that we are in how jerusalem lieth waste and the gates thereof are burned with fire come and let us build up the wall of jerusalem that we be no more a reproach then i told them of the hand of my god which was good upon me as also the king's words that he had said that he had spoken unto me and they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Mm. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite and Gershom the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Mm -hmm. And I answered them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. So check that out. So mm. this man, Ooh. a priest of the Most High that feared the Most High, said, look, the Most High is with us. Because that's who they were trusting on, prospering the work. Mm -hmm. And that's who they were praying to and who they were dealing with. Yeah. And they told these other people, like, yo, you ain't got no portion with us. We don't need your help. Because that's one of the things they were saying. Like, they, they were coming like they were they were there to help, but they weren't really there to help. They were there to control. They were there to control and to prevent them from being what they were destined to be. So mm -hmm. that's the same thing now. A lot of these people plan like they're there for help. They're not there for help. You look at these um groups that are set up. If you examine these groups, they're not there to help you. They're not there, these politics. They're not there to help you. They're there to control and eventually destroy you. Even when you look at things like, you know, we always bring out how they have this thing where they, they give the woman money and stuff like that. What they say when they give these women money, the man got to go. Keep yeah. the man out of the house. Yeah. Is that a help or is that uh, destructive to a family and to a people? It's the satanic policy of destroying the black family. Mm -hmm. you, even when you look at a lot of our women now, they don't even look at it as unifying as a family. Their thing now is uh, women's rights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uplifting their gender instead of uplifting their people. Like you have people here um there's a lot of people here among our people that make a lot of money but they're focused on in helping like somebody like oprah winfrey she makes a lot of money but what does she do with her money does she help go to help our excuse me go to help our people and direct them towards yo know, we need to turn back to god no she went across the ocean and helped other people and did the woman thing again uh set up a school for girls 
um, that became a center for human trafficking. Mm, mm, mm. Um, she, she's also into that globalist. Uh, yeah, thing. but you got to look at who set her up, who did she take allegiance to, who prospered her and built her up and gave her her status, just like a lot of these rich athletes and rappers. Mm-hmm. They, they're promoting the agenda of the elites, not of the Most High through Christ. So they're uplifted in the elites' media and, you know, uh, news stories and uh, magazine covers and Internet articles and stuff like that because they are obedient to their puppet masters. Yeah. Let's read one more. Um, I want to read one more scripture on this. Uh, Nehemiah, the third chapter. Just read verse one. Nehemiah three, verse one. Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mia, they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. So the reason why I want to read that is to show you that um, the leaders of the people when you look at the scriptures were priests, men that were honorable men to the most high. And when they had men that weren't doing that and the people were following them, they led the people astray. Yep. So yep. we supposed to look at priests that are leading us back to God. And now not only God, God, but to our Lord Christ, to our Lord and savior Christ. That's who we supposed to be looking at. Not politicians which are out for money and greed. Yeah. And the one thing, go to Malachi 2. Um, it's one thing about that priest, because there was something about the way that priest dealt. Go to Malachi 2 and 7 right quick. It's a short scripture. Okay. Malachi. Okay, sorry about that. That's all right. You said two and seven? Yes, sir. Read that for me. It says, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Not the messenger of the controlling interests of this society. Mm -hmm. Not somebody that has knowledge contrary to the law, to the word of the Lord as it is written. Not somebody that's going to manipulate the words and have a 27-minute interview and then three minutes from the end of it mention three chapters uh, of, of, of the Bible in passing, basically, to prove his point that this is how we should do the agenda that they told me that we should be on. None of that. It was all men of the most high mm -hmm. through Christ, according to as it is written, that put in the work and had the track record that they were righteous. Not somebody that's kowtowing to special interests. Yeah. Absolutely. That was it. Okay. I want to... um. I want to go to the book of Baruch. I want to pull something out of the pocket for because the Bible, you know, the history is recorded. What's going to happen is recorded. What needs to happen and what we need to do is recorded. So it's our job to pull it out and show it to our people because it's there for us and it's there for our upliftment and for our return. So let me uh, hold on a second. Did I? Let me make sure I get the right book here. Okay. Did I have it? I don't think I had it. All right, Baruch chapter 4. Start of verse 4. Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. Yeah, I love this book because... um. When you talk about things that are pleasing unto the creator are made known to us, it's talking about his word. It was made known to Israel. 
but it wasn't made to known to Israel to put in that put in their back pocket. It was <laughs> made known to Israel to follow and to keep it and to teach and instruct the world. So go ahead, read on. Verse 8: Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. But because he moved God to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. So that's what happened. We moved God to anger because we sinned against him. So now us finding out and, you know, brothers on YouTube and all over talking about we the Jews, we the Israelites. We got to acknowledge this. That's what Nehemiah was acknowledging. And we not we don't only have to acknowledge it, but we have to change. We have to return back to him individually. And as a people. So go ahead, read on. Verse 7. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. And that's what a lot of our people till this day are caught up in, whether they realize it or not. We just had Christmas uh, come through. The most yep. I didn't command us any of those things to put a tree in the house and um, put lights around. Where's that in the Bible? I'll tell you where it's at in the Bible. It's in the Bible telling us not to do it. Exactly. So we still doing these things. I don't care yeah. if you live in church. If you're still doing these things, you're in trouble. <clears throat> you're in the wrong church, too. Absolutely. You're following the wrong pastor. Because a lot of these pastors are telling our people to, oh, ain't nothing wrong with abortion. A lot of these pastors are telling our people, ain't nothing wrong with your son saying he want to be a girl. Yep. Just Anything like um, this society's pushing, these churches are pushing because that's and, what's giving them their degree. Go ahead, and, and um, I was I'm sorry, but a, a pro choice pastor just won an election in Georgia. Hmm. How are you gonna be a pro choice, pro abortion pastor for black people? Yeah, and that's who they're voting for. Yeah, because our people love it so exactly, exactly. And that that's who um somebody like Roland Martin would tell them to go to. <laughs> yeah, to back back those people up. Yeah, and that's why I made the statement about um this uh um constitutional republic is done because yeah. if it's a constitutional republic, they're not supposed to tell you you can't keep your job unless you take a shot. That's not you can't um you can't uh go go to school. You can't do nothing unless you take some type of medical procedure against your your free will. That's not well, a constitutional republic, man. That's a that's a damn communist uh dictatorship society that's that would tell you something like that. Yeah, with a with a whole bunch of uh different separate offices all lockstep in with the Heil Himmler or whatever at the top. Yeah, yeah. And they did that in New York. They had a temporary governor in New York, and you know what they did? They voted her back in after she she did that to them. Please stop reminding me why I need to move. You know, and we don't even know if they did vote her in because the system is so corrupt. But uh, yeah, she was, she was behind in the polls for about six months. But, uh, you know, they always come out winning, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this world is going swiftly to destruction and we have to get right with the most high through Christ, according to as it is written, to survive through it. That's that's our only hope, brother. Yep, that's our only hope. And I was just going to say 140 years ago, they did the same thing where they pressed us with this issue as far as medical. And um, more than uh, 50 years or 40 years before that, they pressed the issue with us with the political issue during the Reconstruction era. Mm. And that fell through as well. It was no power to us. It was no prosperity to prosperity to us excuse me prosperity to us and if we would study that we would find that out and we wouldn't trust politics or politicians yeah, yeah our people been trusting politi politicians for over 100 years and we see that if you examine our people things have done nothing but got worse 150 150 thank you so go ahead read on um baruch 4 verse 8 you have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up, and you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. And we are, we're at this place to this day because, like I said, we have forgotten our resting place. And 
that's where we at. We all people forgot, you know, that we do have a God. And now that we're returning, some of us are returning to the understanding that, hey, we are the people of the Bible. Then you have to return back to him. Because until you do that, it doesn't mean a, it doesn't mean absolutely nothing that you know who you are, because we knew who we, we were when we reading this, when Jerusalem fell is because we were doing evil. So knowing who you are isn't the big thing. The big thing is repenting and doing what you're supposed to do as that people. So, so go ahead, you know, verse nine. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion, and hath brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy I did nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. All right, let's jump a little um, for time's mm -hmm. sake. Let's jump down to verse, uh, let's read 15 to 18. Baruch 4, 15 through 18. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither reverenced old man nor pitied child. And we see that going on now. We see that there is no uh, reverence or pity going on now. You know, they, they kidnapping children, sacrificing them molesting them and all kind of things you know that's why they had that guy uh epstein in prison and there's a lot of information if you watch the fake news you probably don't hear about it that he was released you know there's a lot of people coming out with information you may think it's a, a conspiracy theory but you know you can think what you want but this dude was um he was supposed to be in jail a long time ago but they had let him go yeah, you know, he, he was in some Ponzi scheme with some guy. The guy went to jail, but he didn't because they said he was intelligence. Because he's working for he's working to make other politicians become compromised so they would have something on them when they use them to molest children and do things with little kids. And these are things that's that's a, a lot of information out there about it. You know, I know some people are hearing that and they probably think we, you know, we making this stuff up. But there's a lot of information about it. Like we said, the system is totally corrupt, man. That y'all, yeah. our people are putting trust in. It's, it's it's totally demonic and corrupt. Yeah, and it just goes to show that they're a shameless nation. And if you do a deep dive into English and the languages that it relies on, they're very confusing and strange. Yeah. Not structured like other languages, you know. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's used for that purpose, too, to manipulate. Yeah. They use language as a weapon also. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it, everything was set up like um, like Molin Martin or Roland Martin said, uh, you know, this wasn't built, the, the system here that we're in today in this society wasn't built for our advantage. It was built for others. Yeah, because we sinned. So we're, we were shameless and strange and perverse and didn't reverence the old man, the widow, the child. We didn't follow the judgments. So guess what? We got destroyed and we have a nation that practices those same things over us so that we can see how it felt when we were doing it. Mm -hmm. Now we blaming it on racism. No, it's judgment of the most high and it is written as such in the Bible. But your pastors won't take you there because they'll tell you smooth things so you can keep up with the donations because you don't want to change. Um, Baruch 4, verse 16. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? We have to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies, not a politician. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's going to deliver us. And it hasn't happened yet. And when you look at the people that are in Israel now, they weren't delivered by the hands of the Most High. They were delivered by Great Britain. United Nations. United Nations, America. You know, they were set up there. Over the protests of the surrounding 
nations because they knew and said plainly that those weren't the ones that got kicked out of there by the Lord in the diaspora in 70 AD. They knew. Why don't we know? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been destroyed. Like the scripture said, I, they will put a yoke of iron upon our neck till we be destroyed. So let us jump down. Jump down to verse 23. We're going to read 23 to 28 and we're going to move on. Baruch 4, 23. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but God will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Mm, mm, mm. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God, not from white supremacy. For mm -hmm. thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. So we're going to see the destruction of this society in this world, but it's not all of us, though. It's those of us that return back to God. And it's going to bring it out as you read on. Go ahead, read on. Okay. Baruch 4, 26. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. So you see that? Cry unto God. Cry unto God. Verse 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him 10 times more. So that's that's what we need to deal with, man. The scriptures is telling his he's telling his people crystal clear what we need to deal with as a people. We need to cry to the most high like Nehemiah did, like the people did when they went to rebuild themselves. That's what we need to focus on now. We need to cry unto the Most High, unite as a people, and cry unto the Most High, and he's going to set us back up. This, this is the information they don't want the world to get. That's why they. That's why it's in the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to read it out of, of Peter's. Let's go to Peter's now. Okay. We're going to go to um, First Peter's. Okay. And I'm going to show you that it's, he's talking to Israel because they, they made it into, they took the word of the Most High to his people and made it into a religion. Mm -hmm. But we're going to show you that it's talking about his people. We're going to show you that. Let's okay. start at verse, um, first Peter, have, the second chapter, mm -hmm. start at verse six. You have to share the screen again. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yep, I'll praise it. Okay, we're going to start at verse 6 to 8, and then we're going to bring out another scripture to back it up. First Peter? Yeah. Okay. First Peter 3, you said? First Peter is the second chapter. Okay. Start at verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So... We're going to go in the scriptures and show you what that is talking about. Um, but it's talking about Christ. He's that chief cornerstone. And I'm going to read that word confounded because a lot of our people are confounded. They're in that state of confounded, of being confounded right now. It says to be perplexed, amazed, especially by a sudden disturbance or surprise, bewildered, confused, to throw into confusion or disorder. Um. I want to be perplexed real quick. Perplexed to cause to be puzzled or be bewailed um, over what is not understood or certain, confused mentally, to make complicated or confused as a matter of question. And we are in a state of being uh, confound because a lot of people, our people don't know who we are as a people. They don't know what to do. They don't know what what's going on. You know, they they. 
they think they're Africans, they think that they're, they're um, Indians and all, you know, we just in a, a state of total confoundment. But when you look at the scriptures and you turn to the most high, that's when you begin to understand everything and that you're no longer going to be confound and you're going to see what's going on. So um, read that again, read six and seven together for me. First Peter two, six and seven. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. So it's talking about, again, it's talking about Christ. He's that chief cornerstone. A lot of our people don't believe. Um, even as a lot of our people that may say they believe by their actions, they don't believe. And he is that chief cornerstone that we need to turn to. That's why he said, I lay in Zion. That's the Zion is key, a key word. It's talking about a people. He said, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. And he that believe on him shall not be confounded unto you. Therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them, which be disobedient, mean they're not following. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're going following to, politicians. They're following politicians. They're following different religious philosophies and ideologies and all kind of madness. They're following a Roman Catholicism and all this other madness. The song which the bill is disallowed because they do not want to follow Christ. Disallowed means they don't want to follow him. Mm -hmm. You know, the same is made the head of the corner. Go ahead, read on, verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed so a lot of people are stumbling mm -hmm. at the word you know what i'm saying a lot of people are reading this word and they being confounded by what the scriptures say mm -hmm. they have no understanding they're going into all types of different philosophies and uh, we don't have to keep the most highs days you know they they just totally confused but i want to mm -hmm. go to a quick scripture i want to come back here but i want to show that you know, this scripture brings yeah. a little more light because he said it's contained in the scripture. So let's go to Isaiah yeah. real quick. Yeah. And, and that's that's funny how the scriptures say, you know, if you don't obey, you won't understand. So when people come to you with confusion out of the scriptures, it's generally because they don't obey. Yeah, absolutely. And that clouds their understanding and judgment. And then they call you things like a heretic or you're crazy or stupid. Or not good enough when you try to explain the scriptures to them plainly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so this is isaiah what chapter um chapter eight okay isaiah chapter eight verse 13. start matter of fact start at 12 man okay isaiah, there's, there's a lot on the scripture but i can't sit here and read the whole thing yeah, yeah. Right now. time is running short yeah and um i don't want it to be my fault so i'm gonna read quickly isaiah 8 verse 12. Say ye not a confederacy to all them whom this, this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. And that's the Thank thing. Uh, Israel has always wanted to unite with the other nations. And that's what's going on here. They want to unite with the society that we're in. They want to unite with Babylon and whoever um, the powers that be unite with. You know, that's why a lot of them got their, their Ukrainian flag on their back you know on their uh facebook page and things of that nature on a bumper <laughs> on their bumper stickers the back you know, of their trunk lid yeah they want to unite with whoever the society says unite but the most okay. i say don't unite with them you, you unite, know what? yeah no, i was gonna say not understanding that if you do a deep dive into the history we built and ruled that land until the most high overthrew us by the people that are there now that they're trodden down and blowing up the stuff that we built mm. <laughs> you know going back into the scattered uh series that we didn't finish yeah. but they up there destroying the stuff that our ancestors built and you got their flag so-called their flag on your bumper or on your on your uh you know facebook page or whatever having no understanding because you're disobedient and you stumble at that true understanding and they're probably one of the most racist euro asian empires there is right now 
You know, they have Nazis that control that empire. Yeah. And they are very corrupt. You know, yeah. probably one of the most corrupt governments there is is, is Ukraine. Yeah. And this wicked demonic country was using their their uh, laboratories to create different type of chem chemical agents. Yeah. You know, and, and very possibly, you know, I don't want to get the video taken down. Thank but you. Be very Thank you. How we word it. Yeah. But it was yeah. very possibly used on the society that you're in and some of the people that you love might have been killed by some of the chemicals that were created over there and again yeah. information you're not going to hear from your friend and lover the mainstream media because <laughs> they're a bunch of witches and liars and their job is to keep you uh in a hypnotic state or what they call um psychological warfare yeah which is keeping you your your under some type of mind control where you don't really know what's going on. You don't know yeah. who your God is. You don't know what's right. You don't know right from wrong because you're under attack, whether you realize it or not. Yeah. But go ahead, brother. What you? I know you got some. Uh, Julius Caesar said, "Give them bread and circuses, and they will never revolt." It's a tr a quote that's attributed to him, but it's still true today. Um, there's not much proof that he even existed. Actually, there's more proof that Christ existed than Julius Caesar, but that's another class. Mm. Um, and then the thing about there are actual Nazis over there. You can't fund Nazis unless you're Nazis. And you look at the uh, clampdown that took place almost three years ago in 2020, where there it was, you know, in the name of safety, I'm taking away your freedom. Um, that's what the Nazis did. That's what the Nazis did. Documented history, but you know, people won't investigate that because they've been given a comfort zone to live in. And as long as they don't have to move out the comfort zone, they vote for politicians that's gonna take away their freedom to grow and understand and even defend themselves using an, uh, Muppets that have us following along after their agenda that they put in the Muppets mouth. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so much, man. It's so much yeah. lies that, and deception that's going on, man. Um, um, it's, yeah. uh, it's very sad. Our people are very in a sad case, but, we have to listen to the scripture because the scripture right here is, is verse 13 tells us who, who we need to focus on, man. You know? Yep. Okay. But I'm uh, focusing on all this other, you know, all this other madness and, um, uh, yep. Go ahead, read on brother. Isaiah eight thirteen. sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. So that's what we supposed to be focused on. We ain't supposed to be focused on you unifying with this government and, politics and all that we supposed to focus in on sanctifying the lord of hosts mean cleaning ourselves up and making ourselves right in his eyes you know we're supposed to clean ourselves up and make us make ourselves righteous in his eyes and fear his judgment because these demon demons that we are fearing that our people are fearing and following are about to lead us into a global war whether you realize it or not, they're leading us into a, a, a war with a nuclear power. So, so <laughs> your best bet is to line yourself up and get yourself right with the most high. So go ahead, read on. Isaiah 8, verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel and for a gen and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem because so they are disobedient. Yeah. And it goes to when he came on the scene 2000 years ago. And it also goes to right now because a lot of our people are stumbling at the, at the word. Why? Like the brother said, because they are disobedient to the word. Yeah. They're stumbling at Christ. They say they saying things like, "Well, Christ came, so we don't have to do the the law no more," which is basically <laughs> saying we don't have to be righteous no more. All we have to do is believe. 
Um, we're going to have to keep the commandments in the kingdom, but not right now. <laughs> exactly. We don't have to do it right now. You know, so go ahead, read on. 15. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. And that's what's going on. Like we said, it went when he was on the scene and it's going on right now. They snared, they're in a trap because they're caught up in these different religious philosophies that don't know Christ, don't know nothing about what he came for, nothing about what he died for, have no understanding, and they're going to be destroyed because they do not want to listen. They do not want to pick up these scriptures, read it for themselves, ask questions, examine the what is true and what is false so they can repent and be saved but no they want to continue following madness but go ahead read on verse 16. isaiah 8 verse 16 bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples so the most high has an elect group as christ told them he told the pharisees back then the jews back then that they were the sons of satan and he said, you don't, I told you, but you don't believe because you're not my sheep. Or another word here, you're not my disciples. So there were Jews that he spoke to that were not his disciples. And there were Jews that he spoke to that hated him. As it is this day, there are brothers that are saying they're Israelites, but they're stumbling at the word. They're saying, well, the word means I can do all kinds of things which are contrary to his word. And when you read it, they make excuses or come up with some fake understanding, some perverse understanding that go against what the scriptures are saying. Pastor said. Yeah. My high priest said, my pastor said, mm -hmm. the chief high priest said that I can sacrifice a lamb when the scriptures, Christ said he's the lamb. You know, and, and many other things they stumble at. So go ahead, read on. Isaiah 8, verse 17, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. And that's what we got to deal with. We have to wait upon the Lord that hid his face. When they say he hid his face from the house of Jacob, meaning he allowed us to be conquered. He allowed us to fall into slavery. He allowed us to fall into politics and all the madness that we're in right now. But we that return unto him and that make our prayers to him like Nehemiah did and say we're sorry, our fathers have sinned, we have sinned and went against him, we repent, we're going to turn from our sins, we're going to follow our, our Lord, that stone that you set, that chief cornerstone, we're going to follow him and we're going to return to him, we're going to wait for him because he's that He's the one that's going to deliver us. He's the one that's going to protect us. And he's the one that's guiding us. He's the one we're supposed to turn to, not politicians. He's the one that we're waiting for. So let's go back to um, Peter's. Okay. Peter's the second chapter. And what did we read? Uh, first Peter 2. Pick back up at 8 again. First Peter 2, verse 8. And a stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Okay, now let's look at the disciples. What about the disciples? Bind up the testimony, seal the word among my disciples. So but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's the thing, too. The whole world right now is in darkness. They believe in false politicians, fake, crooked politicians. They believe in false pastors, fake religious philosophies and doctrines. You know what I'm saying? Everything, just about everything in the society is a lie. They believe in fake holidays. You know, it's total darkness right now. But the Most High is calling us out of darkness so we do not be confound like the rest of our people. So go ahead, read on. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, 
but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Yeah, we were not a people, why? Because we were the Valley of Dry Bones, man. We know who we were. We know who our, our brothers and our sisters were. We thought we was Africans. We thought we was Indians. We thought we was this. We thought, you name it, every name on the book. We, you know, we were not a people. But now, through the wisdom of the Most High and through his understanding, we starting to find out that, yeah, we are a people. We are the Jews. We are the elect. But we have to turn to that chief cornerstone. He said, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. He that believe on him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Not on politicians. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go down to 12 and I'm going to end it there, man. Verse 12. Okay. Uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So basically, you know, you know, we are, we still among the Gentiles, you know, we're still in that scattered state as we wait upon the Lord. But he's saying that our actions, you know, and the things that we do, we have to be honest. We have to be righteous in, in this world. And he said, whereas they may speak against you as evildoers. Why? Because one, we don't believe the garbage they believe. We don't believe in um, the media. So they might think we're evil because we don't believe in the, the lies. You know, they might think we're evil because we don't want to get a jab. They might think we're evil because we don't want to wear, you know, whatever madness they're in, we don't want to party with them. They might think we're evil because, you know, we don't want to celebrate their pagan holidays. I mean, the list goes on of the things they're doing, and we're looked as peculiar people because we're not following this world. We're not following the politics. We're not following the religious philosophies of this world. We're not following the pagan holidays that they're following, but we're following our Lord and Savior Christ, which is teaching us and directing us into doing good works, to being honest, to being righteous, being um, individuals with morals, you know, being um, fathers again, being husbands, building back our families, and waiting upon the Lord. So those things are contrary to the world. We crying out loud. They'll call us evil for not accepting abortions. They'll call us evil for not accepting their um, homosexuality and all that madness that they're learning in school now. You know, we have turned away from this world. And we're supposed to turn and sanctify the Lord of hosts and let him be our fear and let him be our dread. You know, with that, um, I'm going to end it there, brother. You got anything you want to bring out? Um, no, just giving all praises to the most high through Christ. Um, we'll probably have to bring out some more of the stuff about politicians and trusting in them on another on another part. And um <clears throat> You know, it was a, a good thing to have a te technical difficulty free almost um, episode. And we hope that both of us hope that this, uh, you know, comes out and helps and edifies our people into repentance to the most high through Christ. Giving all praises to the most high through Christ. And I'm going to say Shalom. Yeah, thank you, bro. Giving all praises to the most high in Christ. And um. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. And as the brother said, we hope you found this show to be edifying. And we pray the Most High bless your wisdom, bless your understanding. And as always, increase the fruits of your righteousness. I was so down, I was drowning. I ain't know I had a purpose. Looking for you, I was searching. Searching for you and I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. I was haunted by the serpent. Had to keep my soul close because the Most High is who I'm serving. Yeah, yeah. I was so down, I was drowning. I ain't know I had a purpose. Looking for you, I was searching. Searching for you and I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. I was haunted by the serpent. Had to keep my soul close because the Most High is who I'm serving. Yeah, yeah. I was so down, I was drowning. I used to look down in my heart and be drowning. And you know that this water is dark. Need to escape. The pressure is hurting. Yeah, deeper I go. Stuck in my woes. The sin is the struggle. I'm fighting it though. The pressure inside is cooking my mind. I need to repent. I'm hurting inside. Yeah. Every day we go and fight vigilant till the day that we die. Cause we ain't giving up alive. Uh, we just go harder for Christ. Daily battle, daily brag. Gotta go eat. 
Just gotta stay fat. It ain't no game when the evil try and trap. Watch my back, my brody look ahead. So we defending the truth. If it come down to death, then we dying for you, Lord. So we stay patient, giving them praises all the way up to you, Lord. And the most high come first, gotta build faith or end up in a hearse. Looking for living waters, searching for living water. I was so down, I was drowning. I ain't know I had a purpose. Looking for you, I was searching. Searching for you and I'm learning, yeah, yeah. I was haunted by the serpent. Had to keep my soul close, cause the most high is who I'm serving. Yeah, yeah. I was so down, I was drowning. I ain't know I had a purpose. Looking for you, I was searching. Searching for you.